In the last 24 hours, Sam Altman posted his reflections on what are some of the breakthroughs you could expect to see this year and in the near future, what it could potentially mean for you as well as investors. Let's cover it broadly in terms of what does Sam Altman, one of the co-founders of OpenAI, see what's on the horizon for you as both a human as well as an investor. So first of all, looking at OpenAI, they've had tremendous growth growing from effectively a research lab to around 300 million weekly active users, a lot of paid users. So they're expecting billions of dollars in revenue uh, and they're expecting arguably to reach billions of people in the next year or two. And they are backed by Microsoft and Microsoft is keeps upping the amount that they're expected to spend on AI enabled data centers. Their expectation for 2025 is now $80 billion. Why are they projecting this sort of mind numbingly large number of, you know, spend in terms of this infrastructure? The key reason why is, and this is in the words of Sam Altman, we are now confident we know how to build AGI. So that stands for artificial general intelligence that has huge ramifications. You know, if you've seen the movie Her or just to understand what is artificial general intelligence, you're talking about an AI algorithm that matches or surpasses human intelligence broadly. This is not just one particular niche. It's not like it's just good at playing Go or playing chess or playing, you know, poker. It is it can do things broadly as good or better than humans. And then this really has severe ramifications for humanity because you can then take if if you truly have an AI that's human level in terms of the ability to process feedback and think and say, OK, this is how I get better. You start getting into self-improvement and then you start having co-workers that are AI or you could take that AI and plug it into, let's say, a robot that may not you know be well balanced or may not function well. And you could say, OK, let's let's put it in and see it through the eyes of this very reasonable colleague. What is it? What is it? think it needs to do to, to all of a sudden have a robot that's fully functional or, or even, you know, superhuman in terms of its abilities. So having that ability to say, hey, we are we think that we are effectively at artificial general intelligence and that we're very clear that we're going to see it possibly in 2025, maybe 2026, but very soon is is a game changer for humanity. And I think it's very important for investors to understand that because this is going to touch every single industry. Then he continues as as if, you know, dropping AGI wasn't a big deal enough. He talks about how in 2025, we may we may see the first AI agents join the workforce and materially change the output of companies. So he's, he's clearly seeing some exciting stuff. You know, I'm personally already starting to see the very first, you know, sort of indications of this AI agents, you know, where you can do things that previously weren't available to you as an investor. Previously, you couldn't have AI say find companies where the management is aligned with you. That is a sort of a subjective, uh, you know, assessment. You know, you're talking about insider ownership. You're talking about buying and selling, whether or not management selling shares. You know, you're 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 looking at man. You're you're doing a a screen or analysis that previously wasn't even possible. So as an investor, you should expect to see more and more tools coming up where you can say, hey, AI, make my life easier. Find companies with that alignment. That's one of the key items on my investment checklist. Find the companies that have this obvious, you know, favorable growth outlook. That's, you know, fantastic. Oh, you know what? Let's even better. Let's make a podcast where it can talk to me about it. And, you know, you could have, you know, it, it could go through what it thinks the stock could do over time, what it thinks of the quality. That is all going to be, you know, available to investors this year. And I think that's that is super important for for folks to to be aware of that this agentic, you know, revolution where you will see AI agents working directly with humans, making human life better. That's going to be rolling out to every industry, especially as we're hitting this threshold of this is human level analysis. That's that's the goal. That's at least what OpenAI is seeing with their most cutting edge models. And they've talked about, you know, most recently how they have this O3 model that's very expensive. And they're saying that's breaking through some of these, you know, effectively genius level exams that they're passing it through. But not only are you aiming for AGI, this general intelligence that's arguably as good or better than humans at 
pretty much everything in terms of the ability to, you know, interact with different subjects, quickly learn, reiterate. So this means you're you're now on this sort of process of learning and improving that AI can help you with. So maybe you put an agent, let's say in a pharmaceutical lab to try out multiple things, you know, say, okay, well, we're, we're going to go through these million different combinations to figure out how to get that that radical new drug that could, you know, lead to incredible life extension. You're going to see that type of testing that's now possible because you have this low cost human level or better intelligence available to companies. And it's just, it's one industry after another bookkeeping. You know, I, I, I previously did a video on, on how it's going to impact uh, employment. So you could check that out, but it's not only general intelligence that we're targeting. They're now saying, look, as you know, they're confident that they're going to get to general intelligence. So you're going to see more and more indications that this year we're beginning to turn our aim beyond that to super intelligence. Super intelligent tools could massively accelerate scientific discovery and innovation well beyond what we are capable of talking about massively increasing abundance and prosperity. So this is as if saying, yeah, we're pretty much at the stage of AGI or artificial general intelligence wasn't enough. They're saying, yeah, our, we're, we're sort of moving the goalposts. We're now focusing on how do we get to, because, because we're so confident that we can get to human level or slightly better across the board, broad, broad level intelligence. We're so confident we can get there based on our various different tools, better algorithms, you know, uh, having it process questions longer, uh, you know, the, the pain points can be solved. We're so confident about that. We're now moving the goalpost to something that's radical, talking about super intelligence, where you're saying not even, you know, the Einsteins can come up with these types of breakthroughs and having that level of mental power, you know, uh, address some of the challenges that we're looking at. And frankly, it's it's hard to even know or to what to expect when when you start dealing with that type of intelligence. And that's why uh, over my shoulder, it's a little blurry. But, um, you know, I I'm a fan of Ray Kurzweil. I read his his original book, uh, The Singularity is Nearer. He recently posted The Singularity is Nearer. And, you know, the reason why singularity is a very relevant analogy is because the singularity of a black hole is, you know, it's lights getting pulled in and you can't see what it looks like beyond. And it's just things are just moving so fast. And that's the direction. That's the reason why, you know, Kurzweil talks about the singularity is when you start talking about super intelligence and aiming for that, which it increasingly sounds like that's going to be something you're going to see this decade. You know, he, Altman makes it very clear AGI you're going to see in the next four years extremely likely possibly this next year, you know, super intelligence that's now on the radar for this next decade. You know, what's that mean for humanity? And it's just, it's impossible to look through that black hole. You know, it, when you, when you start thinking about how fast, you know, what, what <laughs> it's almost like the perspective of, you know, when an ant looks at you you know, the ant isn't thinking, oh, I wonder what's going through through your head. It's it's on a completely different plane. And that might be where we're going with super intelligence versus us, where unfortunately we might be the ants. Uh, ho hopefully not. Hopefully we don't get squished. But I'm I'm sharing this just from a it's a humbling exercise to recognize how powerful AI might truly become in the years ahead. And I, if, if those, you know, drops and ideas wasn't enough to sort of wow you, uh, he also called out in a Bloomberg interview, this Sam Altman, he's like, yeah, don't worry about energy because fusion's going to work. He has a sizable investment in Helion. And he's just like, look, Helion is going to show that it works soon, that fusion works soon. So that's another breakthrough, you know, development that I think you're going to see in 2025 and, you know, to, to sort of back it up, you see that Helion has been making, you know, some significant announcements, one of which was with Microsoft last year, you know, where Microsoft agreed to, to, to purchase some of Helion's fusion power. I mean, this is a breakthrough, fusion, fusion energy, you know, taking, you know, you're not talking about uranium, you're talking about, you know, everyday materials and generating radical amounts of power from it. Now they're working with, uh, you know, Nucor for steel manufacturing, because steel is heavily energy intensive. So this is, you know, maybe they're getting a little in, in front of their skis on this, you know, to be talking about fusion power when they haven't yet had that announcement. But it does sound like you should be expecting that level of breakthrough announcement this year, possibly, 
you know, soon. So I, I look at this and it's just, first of all, what a wonderful time to be alive, to be able to look at these developments. It's incredibly exciting. As an investor, you know, how should you think about it? Um, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, my, first of all, my thoughts, as always, not, not investment advice, not financial advice, but my own, my own personal thoughts is once again, it is difficult to stare into that, you know, singularity and say, oh, I know what's beyond the black hole. You don't, no one does. That's the point. Even Ray Kurzweil, who's exceptional, you know, at, at forecasting what sort of the, how these events have will transpire and his track records exceptional with something like an 80 to 90 percent prediction rate accuracy rate for decades um you know but and he's saying that this is going to happen you know you're good get to agi and and super intelligence and so as an investor i think it's just super important to be mindful that you're going to have these developments. You're going to have much better robotics in the next year or two, especially if you're able to bring general intelligence into it. You're going to still need these huge infrastructure bets. If Helion does make that announcement, I think all sorts of energy bets need to be reassessed. You know, if you're an oil investor, natural gas investor, everything needs to get reassessed the day after, the day of that Helion announcement. So I'm super curious if that happens. I mean, you're talking about trillions of dollars in energy spend. Uh, you're talking about, you know, safety protocols, you know, governments that have generate most of their money from oil. You know, there, there are so many ramifications from that announcement alone. And we're not even talking about AGI, you know, having an AI human level colleague in your office. So I, I, it's super important to have this sort of humble recognition that, wow, the amount of change you're likely to see in the next year, four years, decade is going to far surpass arguably what humanity has seen for, you know, a century or two, or even for all of humanity, for all of, you know, human history, especially if you zoom out, let's say 30 years and you're talking about post super intelligence. So, you know, this is just... It's, it's hard as an investor to say, okay, well, when you recognize your job as an investor is to find those companies that are durable. Well, durability is, is I mean, that's that's the, the free cash flow and durability. That's what creates the value of a business. Well, that's going to be challenged on so many different fronts when you have artificial intelligence in your pocket that can, you know, say, hey, I'm I'm as smart as you were smarter. And, you know, now I can help you with this problem. So, you know, as, as I look at this, I think, as always, be mindful of this changing landscape, but also take it one quarter at a time. So when I see that healing announcement, I think that's something where I go, okay, <laughs> That's that's potentially a game changer for energy. I already do not like energy because it's commodity types of investments. I don't like that. But for everything else, looking at, you know, size it up on a quarterly basis, figure out what's going on. You know, is is the revenue trends still heading in the direction you like? Are the profit trends still heading in the direction you like? For example, you know, a lot of these mega software companies, you know, I too am a big believer that they could get disrupted over time because you're going to have more and more individuals leveraging general, you know, artificial general intelligence, just build the tools that they need. They go, okay, I need a, a CRM tool and I don't want to go spend thousands of dollars with, you know, uh, with, uh, with various different companies, maybe it's HubSpot, maybe it's Salesforce, but the, I, I'm just, just calling that out as an example where I think you're going to see more and more small businesses, medium-sized businesses say, why do I need to pay for software? So you're going to see these types of ramifications, but as always, you know, when I, when I look at my own personal checklist, one of the key items is alignment. I think you're going to see that the, the insiders will know if, if something's you know, getting shaken up fairly quickly. You know, they they will be the first to to hop off the boat if it starts sinking. So I think that's that's probably the alignment stays true no matter what because if you have alignment as your as one of your key checklist items, okay, management still owns it. They're they're likely to be aware of the challenges that AGI, even possibly super intelligence, brings to a to an industry. So. 
okay, if they're not selling their shares or they're even buying shares, hopefully that means they're thinking through these challenges. Anywho, this was sort of a free form, you know, video th reflecting on these huge announcements from Sam Altman, what, what could be coming up in the years ahead. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching Unrivaled Investing.